I know football as a whole is a physical game, but is there any additional concern about playing a team like Notre Dame that can be as physical as, as they are on your defense? Um, so I would agree with you. They are very physical. I think their whole line is an is a, is a elite unit. Um, but, I mean, I think our kids like playing football and like the physical nature of it. So I think, you know um, – I don't think we're like concerned. I, th I think, you know, they, they know it's going to be a huge challenge. Is there anything different, I guess, then in that regard with what they do and how they can maybe physically, you know, beat up on teams versus just normal football, the physicality in the game? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they are re really good at running the football and blocking you. And, and so I think you know, you, you've got to commit a lot of resources to stop the run. So I think that that's where it's a little bit different, but, uh, you know, I, I have a ton of respect for him. I've defended him before, and, uh, you know, it's a real challenge. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, sir. Our next question will come from Brennan Marks. Morning, Jay. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I was just asking, you know, what is your sort of scouting report on Ian Book? Um, how does he differ from some of the other scrambling quarterbacks you guys have faced? What are the biggest things that make him so dangerous? Um, I think he's a really complete football player. I think he throws it really well. Uh, I think he runs it really well. You know, everybody I've talked to that's played him, the first thing they say, not, you know, they talk about how great the O-line is. They talk about how great the tight ends are. The first thing they say is how athletic they thought the quarterback was after playing him than they thought before. So I, I think he's a really athletic kid. He's really fast. Um, I don't think he gets fooled much. So I think it's a real challenge. I think he's a tremendous football player. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next question comes from Gregory Hall. Hey, Jay, I was just curious what you guys focused on uh, over the off week and what you wanted to improve on. Um, I mean, I, I think we, we started working on Notre Dame. Obviously, there were some issues from the last game we had to address uh, that I'm sure Notre Dame's going to put in their game plan. So um, we, we kind of worked on some of the problems we had uh, from Wake Forest and then really got, you know, Notre Dame presents a lot of issues. So I'm glad we had a bye week to kind of go through it all and, uh, and, and try to handle as much as we could. And then watching Notre Dame on film, who has uh, stood out to you? Sure. How much time we got? Uh, we talked about the quarterback. I mean, I think he's a tremendous player. Um, I think the tight ends are awesome. You know, I, they, 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 play two, they play three of them. Uh, they're in two tight ends a lot. I think really good. And I think the O-line has got – I mean, I don't know how – it's like – you know, I'm sure like – Greg Barnes probably knows how the stat. Like, I don't – there's like a ridiculous amount of starts that the O-line has. Um, yeah, you know, I think they're a really good unit. So, I mean, I wish I could say, like, man, we can attack this guy. But I think, you know, we, we, we kind of feel like, you know, it's all hands on deck to defend them. Great. Thank you. We'll move over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, very quickly, go back to the Wake Forest game for a moment. You put a lot of the freshmen on the field, including uh, Kevin Hester got some reps late when you guys kind of flipped the switch a little bit on defense. How did Tony Grimes and Jaquarius and Miles Murphy and those guys look during that stretch? Um, you know, you know, Tony, um, I thought played tremendous, and 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 really, when we put when we put Tony in, we kind of made a decision to play a little bit different coverage concept, and, and we knew he was going to be in, in in man coverage a lot, and I thought he played really well. Um, Jaquarius went in, and, and and that was part of the game plan too, was that we felt like getting a fifth DB in was going to help us. Um, Miles Murphy, I think, has really improved really the last three or four weeks. And, and you know, the most exciting thing for me now is he's finally got the club off so he can, so he can use his hands. And I think that will help a lot. Um, but, I mean, they, they all played really well. And I think you're going to continue to see them play more and more, you know, the, the la these next three weeks. Given what you guys have had to deal with shuffling dudes around in the secondary the last month or so, how big is it getting Collar back this week and the possibility of getting Storm back as well? You know, um, I, I, there's a reason they were starting, right? And so, I mean, we, we think they were, you know, we kind of thought going in they were, they were, they were really good players. And I, and I think we played really well when those two kids were playing. Um, so it, make, it means a lot. You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, the, the, that corner has been the issue because it, it hasn't. But the, those two help. You know, when you can go out and play man, it solves some issues for you. And I, and I, think, I think Kyler's looked really well. And I think Storm's really improving. So, you know, we'll see. Cool. Thank you. All right, let's go over to Ross Martin. All right, Jay, I got a 
be for you here. Kind of building off that, I mean, how do you kind of see the cornerback and defensive back rotation going with potentially getting Kyler and Storm back and what you've seen out of Grimes and and, and Ladeus and Hollins and all these guys? I mean, how do you see that breaking down now with the two new players back? Um, so, like, I, I'm not of the opinion that you lose your position from as a starter or playing a lot from injury, you know? So I, I think when those kids that had kind of proven to us when everybody was healthy that they were the best ones, you know, when those kids come back, you know, I, I think they deserve the opportunity to compete for, you know, to start. And, and once they kind of knock the cobwebs off, you know, so I, I kind of feel like Kyler has really, I mean, I, we, we probably could have played him last week if we had to. Um, you know, obviously the bye weeks really helped him as far as his health goes. So I, mean, I feel like he's, he's definitely going to play. I think Storm will be a matter of, how, you know, how he improves these next three or four days. Um, but, you know, we're, it's kind of like we've been doing. I mean, we're going to play a lot of them. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference, you know. So, it, you know, play the ones that are our healthiest. And, and, and Ross, you know, like we play the ones that practice the best. You know, you, you know, that's kind of been part of our problem, I think, is, you know, it's like a, a guy gets a starting job and then, just, you know, doesn't practice as well. So, now we're in a situation where, hey, if you practice best, you're going to play. And I think that's going to be kind of our message to that group. What stood out the most on the Wake Forest tape? Obviously, defense didn't probably play up to your expectations. I mean, what was the issue? What stood out? Um, you know, we, I didn't think in the first half we did a very good job in the run. Like, you know, I thought our front was really good all game. It was more like, um, you know, some of the, the – they, they, they did some different things from the perimeter blocking us that, that – that we hadn't seen as much. And we didn't do a very good job of handling that uh, at secondary. I think that was the biggest, I mean, I think they had 150 yards rushing at halftime and ended with 177. So I felt like we kind of got that fixed at halftime. We changed the way we were playing a couple different fits at halftime, which I think helped us. Um, the biggest thing, you know, I didn't think I had a very good third down plan, you know, and, and, and we went into halftime and said, all right, we're scrapping it. We're going back to these calls. And I think that really helped us. I mean, I, I don't remember exactly, but at, at halftime, the third down percentage was awful. You know, we, we had got them into, you know, three or four, you know, third and kind of, you know, five, six, seven pluses and, and hadn't gotten off the field. And I think that's really where the, the we had a bunch of issues. You know, you, uh, on offense as good as Wake Forest, if you get them in a third and long, you got to get off the field. And, and we didn't. And I thought in the second half, you know, we, we, we tweaked a little bit of what we were doing. I thought we played a lot better in the third downs. And I think ultimately that's what kind of got the game going back in our direction. On and defense. quickly, oh, sorry. And quickly, was there a reason why Desmond Evans didn't play on against Wake? I mean, you know, kind of like we talked about, Ross. Like, if you, you know, I, I didn't think Des had a really good week of practice. Yeah. And I think he's had, you know, a tremendous two weeks of practice. And and, and here's the thing, like with, with, with some of these young freshmen, like we don't think they're going to be good players, Ross. We think they're going to be great players. And so, like, we're, I'm demanding of them, right, like, that they earn their playing time, right, because that's going to pay off for us a year from now and two years from now. And uh, – and I think Des has practiced tremendous this week. And, he, and, and if he continues to practice like he's practiced, he's going to play a bunch. But, you know, the, the standard is that you come out to work every day and, and, you're, and you're locked in and you're focused and you do your job. And when you do that, you play more. And I, and I think when that, that's, what, that's the standard we need to kind of adhere to right now. Thank you. All right, let's go to Greg Barnes. Good morning, Jay. I hope you're doing well. Um, this, this may be a question better suited for the off season. So, so just let me know if so, but I know last year you were down a lot of guys in the secondary. And one of the conversation points was not having your key guys back there really affected what you could do up front. And I know you've had some injuries back there this year. Could you explain that a little bit and how you may be having some guys out in the secondary forces your hand, uh, up front? Yeah. I mean, so, um, you know, the, the structure of your front and the, and the different blitzes and pressures you want to run, you know, all that in, in, entails the secondary handling of the adjustments. And so we don't have a lot of bank reps at times with some of that stuff. And so, you know, you're not, you're not comfortable calling it because you, you're not sure if we, if we get a, a shift or a motion or a formation that we haven't seen a bunch of that their ability to handle it. Right. And so that, that, that limits your defense a little bit, but you know, Ultimately, you got to line up and you got to whip blocks and, and cover people. And when we have done that, we've played really well and we haven't, we have it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really want, you know, there's no excuses. We've got good enough players. We've got to play better. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll close today with Art Chansky. Go ahead, Art. Hey, <clears throat> hey coach. Um, I imagine one of Notre Dame's goals is not to get into a shootout with Carolina. And that would mean controlling the ball and um, keeping Sam off the field. 
does does that change your game plan uh, in any way where you might do something different to try and get them off the field, like gambling uh, or anything like that? If 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 you obviously that's their strategy. Well, I mean, Art, I don't want to give away any secrets. <laughs> oh, please do. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have certainly discussed. Um, I mean, I, I told Phil after the game, I said, hey, Phil, if I knew you were going to score 59, I, w- I probably would have called the first half different. But, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, I mean, we are, we are more than, you know, you know, Coach Brown and I have, and Phil and I have talked. We are more than ready to, 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 be, a, to pr- be prepared for them to try to control the clock. And, um, you know, th- they have the ability to do it. So, we, you know, and, and they've done it against other people, you know, of – of similar offenses, you know, or, or close to it. I think they tried to do it against Clemson some, you know, so I, I think we absolutely have to be prepared for that. And, and can you tell us what that might mean? I guess blitz I mean, everybody, an ex- Art. Just an I example mean, of that. Brian <laughs> Kelly's going to listen to this, Art. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it, we're going to have to outnumber the run game, right? And I think that's going to be a, a, a key fact in, in stopping the run.